Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. Romans 2. Romans 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, Dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles, through you as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Romans 3 What advantage, then, hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written. 
that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
knows and I have to say you are a nesting lion no matter what I tell you you don't love me less and it shows you're the truest friend of mine on this narrow road of fate I don't want to be unwise straight into the feet of Work with me. Almighty God, we so thank you and worship you today. 
Thank you because you have decided that this is the time for your people. That all the prayers you have been praying, oh Lord, you have bottled up everything. And this is the time to pour out your blessings upon your people in Jesus' name. I'm asking that no child will miss your blessing. No youth will miss your blessing. No sister will miss your blessing. No man, no adult, no brother will miss your blessing in Jesus' name. Let every statement in this psalm be ours. Every promise in this psalm be ours. Everything you have put in this security psalm, let it be ours in Jesus' name. While the message is going on, miracle. While the prayers are going on, miracles. And while we are praising the Lord, rejoicing, O oh Lord, miracles everywhere in Jesus' name. Let there be joy everywhere. Joy forevermore. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. Psalm 91 from verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. And when you come to trust the Lord, even this day, you're going to find that he will be your shelter. He'll be your refuge. He'll be your protection. He'll be your fortress. He'll be the high tower over your life in Jesus' name. Surely, there's no doubt about this. He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. And he shall cover you and protect you with his wings with his feathers under his wings shall thou trust this truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler any arrow that is thrown it thrown against your life it will not get to you in jesus name because no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper it says in verse 5 thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night in the night you are protected not for the arrow that fly by day, in the day you are protected. Not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noon day. Listen to this. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come near thee. It shall not come near me. Because these are flying about, it will not come near you. Sicknesses are traveling about, it will not come near you. Disaster is traveling about, it will not come near you. Hazards are traveling about, it will not come near you. Accidents going all around, it will not come near you. Tears flowing in many eyes, it will not come near you. Heartache for anyone, it will not come near you. Yokes and oppression, it will not come near you. It may come to a thousand by your side, it may come to ten thousand by your side, but this evil sin will never come near you in Jesus' name. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Every day of the week, every week of your months, every month of your years, there shall no evil befall thee. I said there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague, any plague, any plague. They call it cancer, they call it ulcer, they call it tuberculosis, they call it brain problem, they call it depression. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against the stone, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under your feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. You are delivered already. I will set him on high. You are promoted already. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me. And I will answer him. Didn't you hear that? All your prayers are answered. Everything you open your mouth, you tell the Lord. He said, you will call upon me and I will answer him. He will answer your prayer. I will be with him in trouble. Trouble is no more trouble when God is there. 
fire is not fire is not going to burn when the son of god is there the river is not going to drown when the son of god is there when the presence of god the power of god is with you when the promises of god are being fulfilled in your life there is no problem anymore i will deliver him and honor him verse 16 verse 16 i said verse 16 what does it say I said, what does it say? With long life. I have a problem with you. You to pronounce long. You say with long life. I don't pronounce long that way. I say with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? It will be yours in Jesus' name. You see, this is talking about our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our shepherd. He is our shield. He is our shelter. He is our sufficiency. And he is our security. The Lord, my security. As you look at this psalm, there are lots of things to say on this psalm. But you know, today, I'm going to look at number one, the security of abiding believers. Abiding believers. Look at this. It says, he that dwelleth is the person that is dwelling there in the presence of God. Is the person that is living there in the habitation of the Lord. Is the person that was not going out and coming in in fellowship with God. He dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He shall abide, abide, abide. Is the abiding believer and we have this total security this complete security and this permanent security and this perfect security for the people that are abiding in the Lord and then point number two is the divine support, divine support for affectionate believers, affectionate look at verse, verse 14 there because they have set his love upon me he said because of the affection, because of the intimacy because of the fellowship because of the love because of his desire because he's leaning on me because of that affection this is what i'm going to do point number two then is the divine support for affectionate believers and now point number three with long life is the sustainers it'll prolong your life i said it'll prolong your life if you have a big dream, your life will be as big as your dream. If you have a long goal, your life will be as lengthy, as long as the goal, as the destination you have. If there's a great assignment before you, if the Lord knows, even though you are 80 years of age, if the Lord gives you an assignment that will take another 40 years, he has to prolong your life for the next 40 years so that you'll be able to accomplish the, the assignment he has given to you. If Paul the Apostle was given an assignment, when he became a little bit of a young man then god has to prolong his life to match the assignment he has given him that's why we're talking about the sustainers of approved believers approved believers you are assigned you are anointed you are appointed and you are approved and because of that approval he approves your life he said that's my child that's my minister that's my servant i'm sending him to do something and i have to prolong his life to match the assignment of giving unto him the sustainers of approved believers point number one the security of abiding believers look at verse one again he that dwelleth he that dwelleth you can put your name there you can make up your mind i'm going to be the abiding believer because i know that this promise of security and this promise of his sufficiency and this promise of his power is only for the abiding believer. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. In that secret place of the Most High, no evil eye will see you. Because it's a secret place. And the Lord is hiding you there. Like he hid, uh, he hid Elijah at the book Cherith. And Ahab was looking here and there. Or Badiah said, we have been looking for you. There is no way in this kingdom that Ahab had not been searching. Because when we're about to grab you like this, the Holy Ghost will take you to another place. You'll be like that person. That's a miracle of hiding. That's a miracle of security. That's a miracle of being hidden in the secret place of the most high the lord will put it in your life in jesus name 
is it shall abide under the shadow of the almighty abiding abiding that that's the real that's the key there that's the key there if you want to have the key that unlocks the door to this secure place it is the abiding believer let me show you that key it's in psalm 61 psalm 61 we're looking at psalm 61 just to abide just to abide psalm 61 verse 4 it says i will abide in the tabernacle forever that means anything that cannot be done in a tabernacle i will not do that means i'm, I'm conscious of the fact i am abiding i'm abiding i'm abiding in the tabernacle of the lord what takes place in the tabernacle of the lord praises and worship and singing and joy and truthfulness and faithfulness and loyalty and godliness only what can be done in the tabernacle is what i will do because i will abide in the tabernacle forever i will trust in the covert in the covering in the shadow in the protection in the shield of thy wings and then in verse 7 in verse 7 he shall abide before god forever he shall abide before god forever is this abiding believer that has the key e to this security we're talking about in in a proverbs chapter 19 proverbs chapter 19 reading there from verse 23 abiding i will abide i said i will abide i said you will abide chapter 19 of proverbs verse 23 it says the fear of the lord tended to life and he that has it shall abide satisfied shall abide satisfied that means if you're going to abide in his satisfaction that is the satisfaction of the lord that he will say here is my beloved daughter in whom i am well pleased here is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased you are conscious of the presence of god you reverence god you honor god you exalt god you respect god and because of that you will not do anything anywhere that will offend his sight because you are the abiding believer and if you will abide where the lord has placed you if you will abide where the lord has appointed for you you know that all the blessings of god will be upon your life and these blessings will never miss you in jesus name in jeremiah chapter 42 jeremiah chapter 42 he said you know the secret of your protection the secret of your preservation is abide 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 because this security we're talking about is for the people that dwell continually they're not the people that are rising and falling going out and coming in today they are in christ and tomorrow they are in satan today they are in christ and then tomorrow they are in the world today they are in christ and tomorrow they are in corruption but the people that abide continually in the habitation of the lord in jeremiah chapter 42 verse 10 Jeremiah chapter 42 verse 10 If ye will still abide in this land if he will still abide in this land you see there are people they don't understand what security is all about i mean the protection of the lord i mean what god has decided is going to do and the lord has decided that he's going to give you the greatest of blessings uh, from this time on till the rest of your life give me a good amen over there and yet the condition is if you will still abide in this land do you know many people how they are running away from the place god has put them and they say uh -uh, i cannot stay here i cannot stay there I, the lord has put them, them in a place of ministry in a place of usefulness in a place that no other person can do what they ought to do there and then they run here they run there and say brother where are you now well i should have been in that other place but you know challenges are there difficulties are there and because of all the problems there i cannot abide there how are you going to have protection where you have gone now where the lord has not put you if you are staying why don't you come back and say i will be the abiding believer and you'll be that abiding believer in jesus name if you will still abide in this land then i will build you the lord will build you it will build you up it will build a house for you it will build a family for you it will build a business for you it will build everything good for your life in jesus name 
there's a condition here. If you are the abiding believer, if you will still abide, 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 abide in that land the Lord has given you. And then he says, I will not pull you down. You will be up. I say you'll be up. I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I repent me of the evil that I have done unto the Lord says, every evil that came to your life in the past is going to reverse everything in Jesus' name. Abiding, 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 you will abide. I said you will abide. The security we're talking about is for the abiding believer. If you will dwell in the presence of the Lord, if you'll dwell under the shadow of the Almighty and abide, abide, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Look at John chapter 12, verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. That means you abide in the light. Abide in the light, the light of the gospel, the light of his doctrine, the light of his teaching. You are abiding there. You are not in a shady business, in a shady situation, in a kind of a unknown situation. You are in the light, abiding in the light and not in darkness. In John chapter 15, John chapter 15, we're reading from verse 4. Abide in me, then you are secured. And I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, who is this? He that abideth in me, I said, who is that? You're abiding in Christ. You're abiding in Christ. And the blessings of abiding will be upon your life in Jesus' name. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. You know what I see of your life uh, from now on? Whatever it is you are doing, you will bear fruit. In your family, no barrenness again in the name of Jesus. That barrenness is cancelled in Jesus' name. All the counts they say are not in the body of your husband. I pronounce the count coming now and being created in Jesus' name. All the, all the infertility, all the blindness says in that woman, she is not an ordinary woman anymore. She is like, she is like Rachel. She is like Rebecca. She is like Anna. She is like Elizabeth. And I pronounce creativity in the body of that wife in Jesus' name. Because you see, when you are abiding, then you are going to bear fruit. In your business, you will bear fruit. In your profession, you will bear fruit. In your church ministry, the work of the Lord, this work of the Lord will prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. Because it says you will bear fruit, you will bear more fruit, you will bear much fruit. Abundance of fruit will be in your life in Jesus' name. It says, for without me, ye can do nothing. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, that's a stranger, that's not me. If a man abide not in me, I say that's a stranger, that's not you. Because you are the abiding believer. I said you are the abiding believer. But if a man abide not in me, is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are born. If he abide in me, now that's me. I said, now that's me. Where are you? In what verse are you here? Are you in verse 6 or in verse 7? I said, are you in verse 6 or in verse 7? Okay, you're in verse 7. Let's look at you now. If he abide in me. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask whatsoever what she will, and it shall be done unto you. Your prayers are answered in Jesus' name. Let's come back now. Let's come now that we have located you where you are. Now that we have known that you are the abiding believer, let's see what the Lord said He will do for you. Because you are the abiding believer, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You'll be under the shadow of the Almighty. And Satan will not have the effrontery or the courage or the ability or the skill to come under the shadow of the Almighty. The fire of the Almighty God will burn him off in Jesus' name. And demons or sickness, they do not have the effrontery or the courage to come inside that shadow of the Almighty God. Where you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, no Satan, no spirit, no curse, no yoke, no sickness 
Christ will be able to abide there with you in Jesus name because when you come under that shadow of the almighty you are free and free indeed I said you are free and free indeed I will say of the Lord now your language will change you will not say I am unlucky now God never answers my prayer that's the old statement now there's a new statement in your mouth I will say of the Lord because from now on everything you say about yourself will come to pass you say, I'm a conqueror, it will come to pass. I'm an achiever, it will come to pass. I'm victorious, it will come to pass. I am well, it will come to pass. I am doing good, it will come to pass. The Lord is mine. All the promises of God are yes and amen in my life, it will come to pass. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is your refuge. And my fortress, and my God, in him will I trust. Surely there's no doubt in your life anymore. Uh, you know, you cut off some things from your vocabulary. Maybe, I don't know, I cannot tell. Maybe that will happen. Maybe that will not happen. Now, your language is the language of positivity. That means that you are positive. It means that there is a certainty in your life. And it's not a probability. Maybe that will happen. That will not happen. We are just sure that what's ahead of you is victory all the way through in Jesus' name. Surely, it shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Any of the people trying to make conspiracy at the backyard of, uh, you know, those evil people and they mention your name. The moment they mention your name the lord will slap their mouth the moment they mention your name for an evil sin the lord will scatter them in jesus name anywhere they take your name to if it is for evil they will not see your destiny they will not see your star because the lord now the lord said you are mine i'm yours all the facilities and all the agents i have angelic uh, angelic ministers I have for protection i'm going to detail them to protect you you are fortunate you are favored and the favor of the lord will never stop in your life surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the innocent pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers and then under his wings shall thou trust and his truth shall be the shield and buckler have you seen uh, those uh, you know people that have the shield anything you throw at them will not reach them will only reach the shield that means the almighty god himself is your shield anything that is thrown against your life it will not get to you it must stop before it gets to you sickness gone forever affliction gone forever dominion of the devil gone forever something walking on your back on your head in your mind all that gone forever because this is your heritage and thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night i said thou i said thou who is this person thou 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 shalt not be afraid of the terror by night you will sleep well in the night you wake up in the morning you are much refreshed and it says not for the arrow that flies by day or not for the pestilence that walketh in, in darkness no for the destruction that wasted at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side I said a thousand shall fall at thy side. You see, there are many people in the account. They said, you know, something havoc is happening over there. Some calamity is happening over there. They said that something happened to three people. Three people. Something happened to seven people. Happened to twelve people. And because of that, it's getting to me. No. Even when it reaches a thousand, it will not get to you yet. I said it will not get to you yet. And then he says, and 10,000 at thy right hand, and it shall not come near thee. Your children will go to school and come back. Your wife will go to market and come back. Your husband will go, will travel and come back. And the protection of the Lord will be upon them in Jesus' name. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee. There shall no evil befall thee. When I see you again, I'll see you victorious. I'll see you joyful. I'll see you happy. I'll see you fulfilled in Jesus' name. 
You know, some people say, well, we'll meet again, we'll see again, but pastor, be praying for me because I don't know what will happen between now and the next time I see you, nothing bad will happen to you. Nothing evil will happen to you. As you are happy now, there will be multiplication of joy and happiness and gladness. The moment you see again, in Jesus' name. Because there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague. Write that down. Any plague, whatever the name, any plague, whatever the description, any plague. They say it's flowing in the genes. It's because in the family line, it was in granddaddy, it was in grandma, it was this and that. And now it's coming. I'm the next one. No, you. You are not the next one for evil you are not in the least of people that will have that evil sin because it will not any plague will not come near your dwelling in jesus name and now i come to point number two the divine support divine support for affectionate believers you see when people are affectionate they're intimate with god they're not just abiding abiding in the presence of the they love the lord with all their heart all their soul all their mind because of that love let me read that to you again in verse 14 it says because they are such is love upon me because he has set his love upon me. That means you, you, you collect all your love together, all your affection together. You see there are some people, they allow their love to scatter here and there and there. They don't search that love and then focus that love on the object and personality of love. You know, they have a little love for this, a little love for that, a little love for that, a little love for another sin. But there is the man, the blessed man. There is the woman, the blessed woman. It, it, it doesn't allow his love to be flabby, to be flowing everywhere, you know, touching this and that. He sets his love upon the Lord. He focuses his love, his attention, his affection upon the Lord because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. I'll come back to that. Let me just show you something. Setting your love upon the Lord and see what that does. Look at um, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. The people that set their love upon the Lord, their heritage, their inheritance, their blessing, and their protection, and their supply, and their support, and the goodness of the Lord upon their lives. Because they count the Lord special, he counts them special. They count the Lord, if I can use the language, a favorite, he counts them favorites. And because they send their love upon the Lord, he does some special things for them. They put the Lord in a special place, in a unique place. They remember him in the morning, they remember him in the afternoon, they remember him in the evening. When any challenge is coming to them, they remember him. And when they send difficulty, they remember him. They are thinking about the Lord every time, praying to the Lord every time, and looking, seeking for the glory of God every time. Because they put God in that special class and their affection and their love and their faithfulness and their loyalty and their mind and their heart is totally centered on God. Then God's heart is centered on them. God's promises are centered on them and God's provisions are centered on them. Focus on God and God will focus on you. Set your affection on God and God will set his affection on you. Deuteronomy chapter 30, I'm reading there from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we're reading there from verse 6. It says, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love, to love, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. You see, when you set your love on God, that with all your all all the skill you have all the ability you have anything you can muster from within you, you just make sure that you use that to love the lord it says and the lord thy god in verse 7 will put all these causes upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee and persecuted thee the cause will not be upon you anymore I said it will not be upon you anymore. Then he says, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand. Do you see the result? When you set your love upon the Lord, it will make the work of your hand to prosper. You will prosper in Jesus' name. In the fruit of thy body, your children will prosper. 
in the fruit of thy cattle your business will prosper in the fruit of thy land your cross will prosper for good for the lord will again rejoice over thee for good as they rejoice over thy fathers get ready now he rejoiced over abraham and gave him blessing the blessing of abraham is coming upon your life he rejoice over Isaac and Jacob and the blessings of Isaac and Jacob they are coming upon your life in Jesus name he promoted Joseph out of the prison and he brought him to the palace that similar promotion is coming your way in Jesus name Joshua now chapter 23 he set his love upon me set your love upon the Lord and see what the Lord will do set your love upon the Lord and see what the Lord will do in Joshua chapter 23 verse 10 and one man of you shall chase a thousand I said one man of you shall chase a thousand now look up here at me I can't see you but if you raise up your hand I'll see you there Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Anytime I say God bless you, just, just keep quiet. You don't say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now you can put down your hands, those are anointed hands. Do you know that right now, this new revival that is coming, I wanted to get your attention. Now, well, well, healing will be taking place. But you know, healing, some healings will take place from here. Some healing will take place from over there. I said from over there. I said from over there. You know, in the revival that, you know, God uh, saw through, uh, you know, power as of old. And then all those uh, tossed day because that's what is coming back now. I said that's what is coming back now. I said that's what is coming back now. You know, we were, we were having a toss day, we toss day revival hour, and then they brought uh, this uh, lame man, as they brought uh, the lame man in the car in the taxi. And the wife of that uh, lame man uh, said, please, uh, can you help me take down my husband? So that's talking to his sister Osha. And the sister Osha appeared, acted as if she didn't understand uh, the language she was speaking, and just said, uh, daddy, calm down. The wife said, you don't understand. I said, my husband husband is lame paralyzed two legs paralyzed and there is uh, you know where he can come down and the sister Usher said uh, sir please come down and she kept on saying sir come down and the woman kept on saying my husband is paralyzed and all of a sudden i said all of a sudden i said all of a sudden the power of god came upon that man in the taxi and by himself by the ministration of that sister usher that by himself he just came down we had not even started singing crosses we had not started preaching we had not started praying the miracle took place already and i'm announcing to you anything happening over there even before we start preaching there's a lame man rising up and walking over there there's a blind fellow seen over there miracles are taking place in jesus name because one man of you shall chase a thousand and sometimes it's just by rejoicing i remember i went to Osho state you know some time ago and uh, so we're going to have the meeting i say our car entered like this then there was a lame man uh, that was just uh, down there uh, sitting there as the car entered the young people children you know how children are they were they were happy and then they started running after the car after the car he has come he has come he has come and then even the adults they caught the joy you were catch the joy i said you will catch the joy and so the adults uh, you know started running after the car and i was wondering look at these adults men and women and then they turn it into a song he has come he has come and then they put a tune over it and then he has come he has come and the lame man was saying who is it has come they said sit down there he has come and they said what is it that has come they said sit down there he has come he has come and then when do you did he hear any other thing he has come he also joined them he has come he has come all of a sudden he rose up from there. The power of God just struck him right there. And then he also, he was not limping. He was not, uh, you know, trying to, he started running like them. The power of God did it. He has come, he has come. And I'm saying that that revival has come already. That's why I'm announcing to you already, as miracles are taking place from here, from every hall over there, any blind person around you there, you'll say, it's time for you to see. Bring them, bring them, bring them. Because miracles are going to happen to them in Jesus' name. And then 1,000 of you shall chase 1,000 for the Lord your 
God, he it is that fighteth for you as he has promised you. Look at this in verse 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. The, the secret of it is your affection, it's your faithfulness, it's your devotion to the Lord. Take heed therefore if one is going to chase a thousand, if miracles are going to be taking place in every hall and outside the hall and while we're still coming and while we're going back, you need to take it therefore that you love the Lord your God. I'm looking at Psalm 31. Psalm 31. We need to open the gate to the miraculous by the love. The love that he himself is shedding abroad in our heart. We set our love upon the Lord and whatever will contradict the love of God, that we will not say. That we will not do. There we will not go. But only what will support and increase uh, the love and demonstrate the love of God. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. 31. We're looking at verse 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. Now verse 23, O oh, love the Lord, all ye he says, because of what he's going to do. You see, if we're going to herald in, if we're going to announce, if we're going to bring in, if we're going to experience this supernatural we're talking about, it is because we search our love on him. And you love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You love your brother as Christ has loved you. You love your neighbor as yourself, and something great is going to happen. I said something great is going to happen. In fact, some things, some miracles you have never heard of, all those things are going to be taking place in Jesus' name. Those good old days are back again. Those good, mighty, powerful days are back again. And what eyes have never seen, what ears have never heard, they're coming in Jesus' name. And we're looking, we're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're reading here from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But as it is written, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. I remember one of these uh, days I was talking about, uh, you know, we went to, you know, a nearby state in the southwest and, uh, you know, the Lord did some wonderful things and, you know, we, we finished that meeting on Saturday. I needed to come back uh, to uh, Lagos uh, for the Sunday service at that weekend. And then on Friday, uh, the, the Friday actually, fin the uh, crusade finished on Friday and then Saturday morning just uh, rounded up and saw the workers and uh, said, thank you there, thank you there and Praise the Lord, the Lord bless you over there. And then we came back, but on Friday, there was uh, this uh, couple that, you know, they had not heard about uh, the crusade before that Friday. On the final day, they came. And on that final day, when they came, uh, the woman had cancer. And uh, the uh, doctors had said, come on Monday. And when you come on Monday, they, they were going to perform operation. And then as they came on Friday, they said, uh, Pastor, uh, we just heard about uh, this. And I said, no problem. And then I said, what's the challenge? They told me about the challenge. I said, okay. Then we prayed. And you know the kind of prayer. The one that goes straight to heaven doesn't, doesn't uh, beat about the bush and make it long and here and there. Just straight to the point. And you can jams or die. And all. And then I said, you're yeah, all right. You go back to the hospital on Monday. Don't tell them what has happened. Just, you know, go as they they wanted you to come and after you uh, uh, after they examine you they will tell you what has happened because i knew they were going to tell them good story i said i knew they were going to tell them good story just like i know looking at your faces you carry good stories on your faces i can see the good i can see the goodness of the lord upon your faces and i can see the miracle is right there miracle in your mouth a miracle shining on your face already it will happen in jesus name 
And then they got to the hospital on Monday, and uh, the doctor, you know, prepared her for operation and put all the all the garments and everything. And then they wheeled her in, and she didn't say anything, but she knew that something had happened. And then the doctor examined her to see what they are going to operate. And lo and behold, and lo and behold, and lo and behold, they couldn't find anything. And the doctor said, ah, but I saw you last week. I saw you last week. And something, the same must be there. They called another consultant. And then the first doctor did not tell that consultant what had happened. And that consultant examined and they said, why are you calling me? This woman is perfect. There's nothing wrong. And then they called the third one. And then they called the fourth one. And they said, woman, we don't know what has happened to you, but there is no trace of cancer in your body anymore. And then they said, come back. And two weeks after, two weeks after they came back, they went back again. No cancer. One month after, no cancer. And that woman lived, is still alive, not living for a long, long time. And that time has come to you now because with long life, the Lord will satisfy you. And show you the beauty and the glory of his provision in your life in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 9 again. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But it as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Who are the people that love him? He has prepared something for you. What you have never seen, miracles you have never heard of will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Jesus name I'm coming back I'm coming back to Psalm 91 Psalm 91 I'm reading there from verse 10 now Psalm 91 we're looking at it from verse 10 now now that we have established the ground the foundation of you loving the Lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind see what will happen to the people that love the Lord in verse 10 there shall no evil befall thee anymore that calamity that happened before is now cancelled it will not happen again in your life in Jesus' name. You know, you said something happened in your family. This happened to so and so. And every time I hear that this and that, it still brings fear in your heart. That fear is cancelled in Jesus' name. Neither shall any play come near that dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. While you are traveling, his angels will be with you. While you're in the market, his angels will be with you. When you go back to the village, they said, don't come to the village. Because, you know, they have said, anytime you come, this is what they are going to do. Angels will go with you in Jesus' name. And they said, that this is what is happening in that your locality now. Don't you, don't you know, are you not hearing in your place that this is what happened to so-and-so? Do you know Mr. So-and-so? Do you know that a distant relative relation of ours? This is what happened. So don't come now. When you go there, you'll be a different person. Because what happened to them over there will not happen to you in Jesus' name. It says, they shall bear thee in their hands. Let thou not touch thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will, not that I may, I will. I will deliver him. I will set him on high. I will set him on high. I will set him on high. All those people that are sitting in your promotion, the Lord will take them out of that place. And your promotion will come to you in Jesus' name. I will set him on high because he has known my name. I will call, he, will, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. The honor of the Lord is coming upon you. The award from the Lord is coming upon your life. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Remember, these blessings will run after you. These blessings will run after you and overtake you. Because it says this is the heritage of the people that love the Lord. This is the promise of God for the people that love the Lord. Because it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all his commandments. Which I command you this day. That the Lord thy God will set you on high. 
above all the nations of the earth. Don't compare yourself anymore with, you know, so and so and such and such. The Lord has lifted you up. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. And overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 7, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee. How many times? Seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou statest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As seers one unto thee. If ye shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God. And walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee and the lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the lord thy god swear unto thy fathers to give them the lord shall open unto thee unto thee say unto me it's good treasure the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in, in a season and to bless all the works of thy hand. All the works of your hand will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee, the Lord shall make thee, the Lord shall make thee, you'll be the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, above only, above only. You'll give your testimony. You'll not have enough time to give all those testimonies because a lot will happen in your life between now and the next time we see in Jesus' name. Psalm 91, point number three, the sustenance of approved believers, appointed believers, assigned believers. I told you, when God has assigned you to something and he says, this is what you will do. And he has said that even though you thought you've done quite a lot, you're almost, you know, uh, passing the age of uh, living here again. But the Lord is saying, he just wants to begin with you now. There is a time of excitement now happening. There's a time of expectation now happening and he gives you a new assignment a new appointment and it's going to prolong your life until that assignment is finished and you will finish it in Jesus name point number three the sustainers of approved believers with long life when I satisfy him and show him my salvation long life is coming to you I said long life is coming to you don't mind the devil is such a coward he'll come in the dream and then in the dream he'll be telling you you are going to die you are going to die he said, I don't believe in that kind of dream I believe in the Bible my Bible is greater than the dream and I believe in the prophet of God the word of the prophet of God in the scriptures is greater than that dream I cancel that dream in Jesus name you see, all those dreams are nothing. It's just the devil trying to come. And when he knows that you are almost unconscious and you are sleeping, then he wants to drop an idea. And then when you wake up in the morning, instead of meditating upon the word of God, that will see you through. And the Lord has said, he's going to give you long life. And then the dream is what you'll be carrying about. And then you say, do you know, I had a dream. I don't want to know about that dream. I want to know about the long life the Lord said he'll give you because I know that long life is there in Jesus' name. Him. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. That is, if you keep to the word of God, all I know is the promise of God. All I know is the power of God. All I know is the practice in the word of God. All I know is his precept. All I know is his commandment. And if I'm keeping to that word, length of days and long life, the Lord will give me and will give unto you too in Jesus name. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 10 verse 27. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 27. It tells us there, the fear of the Lord prolongeth 
days. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. When you honor the Lord, you respect the Lord, you remember the Lord, and you a kind of a you know you worship the Lord. He says that fear of the Lord, that reverence for the Lord will prolong your days. Your days are prolonged in Jesus' name. In Exodus chapter 23, long life. Everybody say long life. Long life. Say it as if you believe it is yours. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, it says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God. Anybody serving the Lord our God over there? That's you, that's you. Praise the Lord. And ye shall bless thy bread. And ye shall bless thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And there shall nothing cast their young. And not be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of your days I will fulfill. Not a minute will be cut off from your life. The number of your days I will fulfill. Not an hour will be cut away from your life. The number of your days I will fulfill. Not a day, not a week, not a month. You will not die prematurely. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation it is coming your way I said it's coming your way look at this now in Deuteronomy chapter 33 Deuteronomy chapter 33 I'm reading from verse I'm reading from verse 26 there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun who rideth upon the heavens in thy hell and in his excellency on the sky the eternal God is thy refuge Underneath thee are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel and the people of God here shall dwell in safety alone. The fountains of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heaven shall drop down deal. Happy art thou, O people of God. Who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, who is the sword of thy excellency, thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Thou shalt tread upon their high places, because this promise is yours and you are going to experience it from this very day in jesus name because you are that man you are that woman you are that boy you are, you are that girl that dwell that dwells in the secret place of the most high and you are abiding under the shadow of the almighty from now on don't say anything negative you will say the lord is my refuge he is my fortress he is my god in him you will trust surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler from the noisome pestilence he will cover you with his feathers under his wings you will trust his truth shall be your shield and your buckler you will not be afraid of the terror by night you will not be afraid of the arrow that flies by the day you'll not be afraid of the pestilence that walketh in darkness neither will you be afraid for the destruction that wasted at noonday because from now on a thousand will fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand it shall not come near you only with your eyes you will see and behold the reward of the wicked because you have set your love you have made the lord your refuge and your habitation there shall no evil before you anymore neither shall any plague any sickness any disease any cause any yoke any oppression any affliction come near your dwelling anymore because the Almighty God will give his angels charge over you, you in particular, and will keep you in all your ways. These angels will bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your feet against any stone, and thou you will tread upon the lions and the adders, and then the young lion and the dragon, all those evil paths and evil spirits, you will trample under your feet. They are now under your feet, because you have set your love upon the Almighty God. Therefore, he will deliver you he will set you he will set you on high he will promote you because you have known his name you will call upon him and the lord will answer you 
he has answered you already. He will be with you in trouble. He will deliver you. He will honor you. No moment of your life, no minute of your life, no day of your life will be cut short with long life. It will satisfy you and it will show you all the promises and the privileges and the power of his salvation. You've got it already. You are the blessed man. You are the blessed woman. Where is the blessed man? Where is the blessed woman? The blessed boy, the blessed girl. Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. It is mine. I accept. It is mine. The promises of God, they are yes and amen in your life. Evil is cancelled. Disease is cancelled. All those oppressions are cancelled. And the Lord himself in his power. And he has said, this is yours. You've got it already. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is yours. There's no fear in your heart anymore. There's no anxiety in your heart anymore. Because right now, the Lord has said, if you'll dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And because you're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, see what the Lord has said they will do for you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, I praise the Lord, I praise the Lord. This is happening already. It's happening already. It is confirmed already. And what do you say with your mouth? I will say of the Lord, He is my Savior. I will say, He is my sanctifier. I will say, He is my healer. I will say, He is my baptizer in the Holy Ghost. I will say, He is my conqueror. I will say, He is my captain. I will say, He is my refuge. I will say, He is my protection. I will say, He is my help. You tell the Lord, this is what you say. This is what you say. Every good word you say out of your mouth today, it shall be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled because you carry authority in your mouth now. You carry miracle in your mouth now. You carry power in your mouth now. You carry anointing in your mouth now. Whatever you say, say to that mountain, everything will move away. Rejoice in the provision of the Lord for you. He'll deliver you. He has delivered you already. This now the fowler. And the conspiracy of the evil people, he has delivered you already. He's covering you in a secret place. Covering you in a secret place. You are a favored brother. A favored daughter of God. And because of that favor, you rejoice in the Lord. You crush all the powers of the enemy. You walk over all those evil things. You don't fear them anymore. No enemy will stand before you. No power of darkness will stand before you. Not be afraid in the night, in the day, at home, in the market, in the office, on the road, on the tree. No more fear in the air, on land on sea no more fear accidents are cancelled from your life sicknesses cancelled from your life what happens to whatever happens to thousands 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 of people near you will not come near you special protection peculiar protection that the Lord gives and grants unto you. God counts you special. Count yourself special. Count you secured. Count yourself secured. Your favorite of God. Accept. Accept. That promotion that has been denied you for a long time. The promotion is now yours. Accept. You've been weak and sick. But now you are well. You are healthy. You are strong. Accept. Whatever bad news you are hearing has happened to other people. Don't accept that. Don't take that yourself. That's them, that's them, that's them, that's not you. The Lord has counted you different, distinguished you, separated you from all those calamities. He is your refuge. He is your habitation. 
no evil, no accident, no disaster will come upon your life. It will silence the workers of evil. The angels of God will bear you up in their hands. Lest any evil sin touch you, you will enjoy the work of your hand. He will bless you, you will enjoy that blessing. He will promote you, you will enjoy that promotion. He will build you up, build your family, build your life, build a house for you. Yes, he will, yes, he will, yes, he will. He will. He'll build that business. He'll build that life. He will build everything concerning you. Your time of progress has arrived. Time of power has now arrived. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracle in your body. Miracle in your family. Miracle upon your children. Miracle upon daddy. Miracle upon mommy. Miracles at school. Miracles in church. Miracle in the office. Miracle. Miracle at the end of the year. Miracle at the beginning of the year. Miracles. That your child you are concerned about, the Lord has answered your prayer concerning that child. It is well. It is well. Accept the blessing. Receive the blessing. Seal up the blessing. Nothing to tamper with the blessing. Every good thing the Lord has said concerning you, they're fulfilled already. Seal it up. Seal it up. Seal it up. The blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Seal it up. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Heaven and earth may pass away, but His word or promise upon your life cannot pass away. It's done. It's done. Now make up your mind, I will abide, I will abide, I will abide. Make up your mind, I will love, I will love, I will love him with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. Make up your mind, it's appointment for me. It's appointment for me. I will accomplish. There's long life for the appointed believer, approved believer, assigned believer. Long life. Length of days. He grants unto you. Wonderful God. Rejoice in the beauty of the provision of the Lord. Rejoice in the fulfillment of the unchanging promise of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Abiding believers, anointed believers, appointed believers, in Jesus' name we pray. 
blessed believers, different believers, distinguished believers, unique favored believers. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy, 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 joyful believers. The people that are now overcomers. Where are they? Overcomers, overcomers, overcomers. In the house, overcomers. On the field, overcomers. In the bus, overcomers. On the train, overcomers. In the plane, overcomers. In the, in the, in the family, overcomers. In the village, overcomers. And the angels are surrounding you. It's like, you know, you are now an officer. You are an officer of heaven. And then there's this bodyguard always following you. Put those hands together for Jesus. The Lord will accomplish it in your life in Jesus' name. There is no sickness in your head. There's no sickness in your eye. There's no sickness in your ear. There's no sickness in your lung. There's no sickness in your heart. There's no sickness in your joint. There's no arthritis in your bone. There's no pain in your body. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, you are well. You are whole. And you are perfect. Rejoice in Jesus' name. All the money you need, all the house you need, all the building you need, all the job you need, all the provision you need, everything. Goodness and mercy of the Lord following you, you will rejoice in these days to come. Prospered children of God, prosperous children of God, happy children of God, in Jesus' name we pray. You will have enough. It will spill over. And then your cup will be running over in Jesus' name. You will lend to many people. You will even say, take that thousand I give you. Don't remember that to return that one. Take this one I give you. Don't You don't need to return that one. Because blessings will be so much. You just, you help this one. You bless this one. You bless that one. There will be no lack in your life in Jesus' name. Are you there? I said, are you there? Where are you? Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you have started something new in the life of every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl. I pray that this new thing will continue forever in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray no calamity will be in any life. No evil in any life. No plague in any life. No disease in any life. You sickness and you pain and you affliction, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, nobody here, nobody here, all these people raising up their hands, all those people over there that are listening and raising up their hands, I cancel premature death. That spirit of death, I cancel in Jesus' name. That, that baby the side is dying. I pray the spirit of life to come in that baby right now. Come alive in Jesus' name. I pray in all your families, life. Over your children, life. Over your wife's life. Over your husband, life. Over yourself, life forevermore in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray your shield, your protection, your shadow, your covering will be upon everyone. I pray, Lord, all the poverty is cancelled. All those jokes are broken. All the fetters are broken. All the chains are broken. All the limitations are taken away. Confirm it in Jesus' name. Lord, the words of my mouth concerning your people, fulfill it, O Lord. And I pray, Lord, there will be joy evermore. There will be victory evermore. There will be healing evermore. There will be dominion evermore. There will be promotion evermore. Lord, I pray everything we have said, every good thing we have opened our mouths and confirmed, confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't sit down yet. Tell the person by yourself, I am that abiding believer. I said, I am that abiding believer. Go ahead, go ahead. I am blessed. It's confirmed in Jesus' name.